Did you buy a new truck or SUV in the last few years? There's a real chance it came with a catastrophic failure waiting to happen. We're talking about over 5 million engines from major automakers that are either under recall or facing serious investigations right now. Some engines are failing at 30,000 miles, others at 60,000. And this isn't just one or two isolated problems. According to NHTSA, over 29 million vehicles were recalled in 2024, with engine failures being a major focus. So what's actually causing this unprecedented wave of failures across every manufacturer? After digging through industry investigations and expert analysis, what I discovered is eye-opening. Today, I'm breaking down exactly why modern engines are failing at alarming rates, the engineering decisions that created this crisis, and whether this situation is going to improve or get worse. Let's dive in. Automotive News recently published a comprehensive investigation that interviewed engineers, industry experts, and manufacturers to understand this crisis. Here's how they explained it. The automotive industry's decade-long push for cleaner, more fuel-efficient engines has created unintended consequences. Translation, in trying to meet EPA and CAFE fuel economy regulations, manufacturers essentially pushed engines beyond their reliability limits. Today's engines deliver record amounts of power per liter while running at higher temperatures and creating higher cylinder pressures, with all that stress forced through smaller engines with less bearing surface area to handle it. Let me give you specific examples of what we're dealing with. NHTSA opened an investigation into 877-710 GM vehicles including Silverado, Sierra, Tahoe, Suburban, Oukon, and Escalade models from 2019 to 2024 equipped with the L87 6.2-liter V8 engine. The investigation was prompted by complaints about bearing failures that could lead to engine seizure and connecting rods breaching the engine block. That's catastrophic failure where a metal rod punches through your engine block while you're driving. Ford recalled over 411,000 vehicles from 2021 and 2022 model years including F-150, Bronco, Edge, Explorer, and Lincoln models equipped with 2.7-liter and 3.0-liter EcoBoost engines. The problem was traced to defective intake valves that could fracture inside the engine. Ford processed 825 warranty claims and replaced 936 engines, with a failure rate of roughly 0.26%. That might sound small until you realize it means over a thousand catastrophic engine failures. Honda recalled nearly a quarter million V6 engines for engine failure, with another 1.4 million engines added after NHTSA investigation. Hyundai has over 3 million of their Theta 2, Gamma, and Nu engine lines under recall, affecting models going back over a decade, with potential costs exceeding $5 billion. Toyota is replacing more than 100,000 twin-turbo V6 units due to machining contamination. Even brands with legendary reliability reputations are experiencing unprecedented failure rates. So what's actually causing these failures across every manufacturer? The investigation identified several interconnected factors. Factor number one, aggressive engine downsizing combined with turbocharging. Manufacturers took engines that used to displace 5, 6, or 7 liters and shrunk them to 2.7, 3.0, or 3.5 liters while maintaining or even increasing power output through turbocharging. The problem is physics doesn't care about your fuel economy targets. Smaller displacement means less bearing surface area to distribute loads. The bearings, crankshafts, and connecting rods have less metal to handle the same or greater stress. Add a turbocharger generating extreme heat and pressure, and you're pushing cylinder pressures that were racing territory just 20 years ago into every truck on dealer lots. Factor number two, Ultra-thin motor oils mandated for fuel economy. Industry experts explained that thinner engine oils are affecting reliability, with these oils being less tolerant of manufacturing errors. Most modern engines now run 0W20 oil. Some manufacturers are moving to 0W16, and there are even engines coming with 0W8 specification. Compare that to trucks from the 1990s that typically ran 10W30 or 5W40. We're talking about oil that's literally half as thick. Why the change? Thinner oil flows easier, reducing internal friction and pumping losses. 
This might improve fuel economy by half a mile per gallon or one mile per gallon, but multiply that across hundreds of thousands of vehicles, and it helps manufacturers meet CAFE targets and avoid massive federal fines. But here's the critical problem. Between your crankshaft and bearings, there's a gap measuring less than the thickness of human hair. All that separates those metal surfaces under extreme pressure is a thin film of oil. When you make that oil thinner, you eliminate almost all margin for error. Any microscopic contamination, any slight manufacturing imperfection, any momentary loss of oil pressure can cause immediate metal-to-metal -metal contact and catastrophic failure. Factor number three, manufacturing quality control at mass production scale. This is where things get really interesting. GM attributed engine failures to multiple supplier manufacturing and quality issues affecting connecting rod and crankshaft components. Ford's investigation revealed defective intake valves exhibited grinding burn or out-of-specification hardness, indicating the valve supplier's manufacturing processes were not within control specifications. When you're building thousands of engines per day per factory, maintaining perfect quality control is incredibly difficult. Every crankshaft must be machined to exact specifications. Every bearing surface needs precise tolerances. Every component must be thoroughly cleaned to remove all machining debris and contamination. Industry experts explained that microscopic debris left from machining operations, called SWARF, is a major problem. When cylinder bores are honed to final finish, the process creates a mixture of metal particles, abrasive material, and cutting fluid that can harden like concrete. If even microscopic amounts of this contamination reach bearing surfaces with ultra-tight tolerances and thin oil, it acts like sandpaper destroying components rapidly. Hand-built racing engines undergo hours of meticulous cleaning to remove every trace of contamination. Mass production facilities building a thousand engines daily simply cannot match that level of cleanliness consistently. Factor number four, increased complexity adding more failure points. Modern engines incorporate technology that didn't exist 20 years ago. Start-stop systems that cycle the engine on and off dozens or hundreds of times daily. Variable displacement that deactivates cylinders. Direct fuel injection creating cylinder pressures far higher than port injection. Variable valve timing controlled by oil pressure. Variable flow oil pumps that adjust pressure based on demand. Dual clutch or CVT transmissions with complex hydraulic systems. Each technology improves efficiency on paper, but adds complexity and potential failure modes. When you stack all these systems together in an engine that's already operating at its physical limits, you create situations where everything must function perfectly all the time with zero tolerance for error. Automotive News spoke with industry experts who explained that the power and high temperatures these engines run at are putting considerable stress on critical engine components. Modern engines aren't just making more power per liter, they're running hotter and under higher sustained loads than previous generations. Combine that with thinner oil, tighter tolerances, increased complexity and mass production quality variations, and you've created the perfect storm for widespread failures. Here's what makes this particularly frustrating. Not all modern engines are failing. There are engines running 0W20 oil that achieve 300,000, 400,000, even a million miles. The difference is those reliable engines typically have larger displacement, naturally aspirated designs with more bearing surface area and built-in safety margins. They're not pushed to absolute maximum efficiency. The failing engines are the ones engineered right to the edge, Maximum power from minimum displacement, maximum efficiency with minimum safety margin. So is this getting better or worse? Honestly, the situation will likely get worse before it improves. Here's why. Recent regulatory discussions about rolling back certain fuel economy standards might suggest manufacturers could return to simpler, more reliable engine designs. But it's more complicated. Major changes include removing EV credits from CAFE calculations. Previously, manufacturers could build electric vehicles and use those credits to offset fuel consumption of trucks and SUVs. Now those EVs don't count toward meeting fleet average targets. Manufacturers must hit fuel economy standards with their gasoline and diesel vehicles alone. The target is 34 miles per gallon fleet average by 20s and 31. Think about what that means. 
If you're selling trucks getting 15 to 20 MPG and SUVs getting 22 MPG, how do you average 34 miles per gallon? You can't with traditional engine technology. Manufacturers will likely respond by making everything a hybrid, adding electric motors and batteries to every model. They'll push even more aggressive downsizing, smaller engines with more turbochargers and tighter tolerances. They'll use even thinner oils, possibly 0W4 or 0W2 in the near future. They'll add more complexity, more start-stop systems, more variable technologies, more electronic controls. In other words, engines will probably get more complex and stressed, not less. Additionally, manufacturers have invested billions into EV platforms, hybrid technology, and efficiency systems. They're not abandoning those investments regardless of policy changes. If regulations change again in four years, they could be caught unprepared. So they're committed to this technological path, whether it improves reliability or not. Industry analysis concludes that automakers need to prioritize durability over marginal efficiency gains. The race to downsize has created engines that are efficient and less polluting on paper, but fragile in practice. There needs to be better balance between efficiency and longevity. But the question is whether manufacturers will make that change voluntarily or whether they'll continue pushing limits until the cost of recalls and warranty claims forces their hand. Here's my take after analyzing all this data. I think we're witnessing the internal combustion engine being pushed beyond its practical limits. These engines are being asked to meet conflicting goals simultaneously. Maximum power output for customer satisfaction. Maximum fuel efficiency for regulatory compliance. Minimum emissions for environmental standards. All at price points consumers will accept. Something had to give. And what gave was the safety margin that provided long-term reliability. Maybe a truck that gets 28 miles per gallon, but lasts 300,000 miles is better than one that gets 32 miles per gallon, but fails at 60,000 miles requiring a complete engine replacement. This isn't about a few bad engines or isolated quality problems. This is about an industry caught between government regulations, consumer expectations, and the laws of physics. When you try to extract maximum performance from minimum displacement while meeting stringent emissions and efficiency standards, the engineering margins that previously provided reliability get eliminated. Modern automotive technology is genuinely incredible. The performance these engines deliver is remarkable. But we need to be realistic about the trade-offs. Higher specific output, better fuel economy, and lower emissions are excellent goals. But not if achieving them means engines that fail before reaching 100,000 miles. I want to hear from you in the comments. Have you been affected by any of these recalls? Do you own one of the affected models? What's your experience been with modern turbocharged engines compared to older naturally aspirated designs? Do you think manufacturers prioritized efficiency over reliability, or are these just growing pains as technology advances? If this video helped you understand what's really happening with modern engine reliability, smash that like button and hit subscribe. I'll continue investigating these issues and bringing you the real story behind automotive problems that affect millions of drivers. Thanks for watching, and remember, the cheapest repair is the one you never need because you bought a vehicle with a proven reliable engine. See you in the next one.